happen. Recording in progress. I'll allow the chief to speak. Um, speak also, chief. Chief, you're on mute. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Gerald Woodyard. I'm the deputy chief here at uh, Operation South Bureau. And, and thanks for, for joining us um, on such short notice. Um, I had an opportunity to see the and um, Chief Moore thought it would be prudent that we connected with the community to ensure that we dispel any rumors. But more importantly, anytime we have an officer involved shooting, we wanna make sure that there aren't any um, community concerns and or um, anything that would um, continue to, to, to have an impact on the community. Um, I will say um, that the depiction by uh, Captain Lopez is accurate. Uh, there was some concerns that the, um, the, the, the individual um, passed away. And my understanding is that he did not pass away. He's actually um, in the hospital um, as we speak, um, mending from his injuries. Um, with that being said, I had an opportunity to to look at the video. I had an opportunity to, to hear the um, the nine one one call, and um, from what I what I heard and what I saw, um, the caller actually indicated that you know um, they believe that the the uh, individual had a gun in his hand. But what's what was important to me was. Um, it, it, it sounded like the Carter caller was, um, was, was a little in not panicked, but shook up because he believed that, um, someone had pointed a gun at him as well. So with that being said, um, we're here to just tell you what the process is, um, and, and to make sure that, um, you know, that we're here to, to, to ensure that, that we're going to continue to police the area in a, in a systematic way. We're going to make sure that we stay connected with our community. And if there's any concerns, if there's any questions, um, not only the Captain Lopez and his partner, Ben Fernandez, you know that my door is always open because I, I've been a captain at Southwest Division for a number of years. And I have a number of, of, of community members that I know there. So we're always concerned when we have an officer involved shooting. But with that being said, again, thanks for being on this call. And then we're going to tell you about the process um, going forward. Rudy, I'll pass it back over to you. Thanks. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, boss. So um, to, to keep it what we call a clean investigation, Southwest does not uh, investigate uh, this incident. We have a clear, clean and independent division called Force Investiga Investigation Division uh, rolled out the night of the incident. Uh, they had a team of detectives go out, interview officers, interview witnesses, gather evidence, look at body-worn video. Um, they were, and they will put this thing together uh, for the next couple months uh, and complete a comprehensive detailed investigation, a fact-finding mission only. They don't render opinions. Uh, clearly, they just could put a scenario from beginning to end as to what transpired there. This thorough investigation in about eight months' time ultimately gets presented to a use of force board. That board, that board is uh, department experts to include uh, chiefs of training, uh, chiefs of um, admin uh, will all render a finding uh, after this presentation is done. Um, a lot of uh, thoughtfulness goes into what is discussed, what is presented on a PowerPoint presentation, and what are the facts of the incident, and then they will render a finding. Those findings are put together, and ultimately uh, the chief looks at the thought process of that board and renders his own findings. He may agree, he may disagree with certain aspects of it, but the chief makes his own independent finding based on, again, the facts of what Force Investigation Division. Uh, once that is done, uh, the inspector general is also part of that process. He's an independent board for the department. He uh, weighs in on any, has any questions or may ask uh, for uh, additional investigation to occur uh, during that process. Uh, ultimately, um, as it nears some, because of the complexity of this investigation, it can take almost nearly a year. It, it, this entire piece gets presented to the police commission, which is made up of five independent uh, board members. 
uh, the original use of force board, the chief's findings, and the investigation itself is all presented to the police commission, and they make a finding if they concur with the, the chief's findings or not. They are the ultimate sayer as uh, what will be the final uh, verdict of this shooting. Good, bad. Um, in many cases, it's it's bifurcated into different findings as to the tactics leading up to the use of force, um, to the shooting, and then the shooting itself. So there's a lot of eyes on this thing, and this this process is inclusive of all officer-involved shootings. The department takes it very serious. We have one of the most comprehensive independent systems uh, out there um, nationwide. Uh, many of our uh, fellow police departments have utilized our system of uh, shootings uh, and try to copy that because we are so comprehensive with our investigation. So that, uh, again, this is going to take several months before a decision is rendered. The video, the body-worn video is going to be uh, released uh, to the public within 45 days. And again, that is just segments of what transpired over there because the investigation does take so months, so many months to transpire. Uh, I mean, to, to get released, um, the, that body-worn video will only be segments of what we know at the time. So with that said, uh, myself, and I see the chief is still uh, available uh, for us. Um, if you have any questions as to what transpired, uh, let's keep it specific to this incident. Uh, CPAB does have uh, meetings, and they're going to have another one on Monday. If you have, um, I know we have special People who ordinarily are not part of CPAD here on, on this town hall, um, that is a great venue to um, address any concerns or issues you may have uh, away from this incident. But this um, town hall is specifically designed to address uh, what we're talking about in this officer involved shooting. So, with that said, uh, Aaron, if there's any questions, uh, I'll make myself available to answer what I know. So if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand or uh, or place it in the chat. I see a, uh, a hand raised by uh, Gina Fields. I go ahead Hi, with your evening. question. Yeah, I'm Gina Fields, chairperson of uh, Equa Neighborhood Council. Um, I'm just a bit confused. Uh, did the uh, suspect have a gun or he did not have a gun? It, it was not a... a a gun itself. No, it resembled a gun. It was a, a hard metal object. Um, I'm going to give my own opinion on it. If I saw that uh, and he was carrying it and I had information that the, uh, the from a witness that he was pointing that at me, I would have believed it was a gun, but it was a, a non-functioning firearm. Understood. And last question. Did he have any mental health issues? Do you know? Yeah, he does. He does have a, a record of mental health issues. He does. Correct. Yeah. Understood. Thank you for uh, having this town hall today and keeping the public informed. We greatly appreciate it. Of course, Gina. I appreciate wow. your time. For your question, we have another hand raised uh, from Phil uh, me, Thap Thapolis. Go ahead with your question. Uh, yes. Um, so I have a couple of questions. First question I have is, are you describing this metal object, which uh, I believe Chief Moore called it a black metal latch actuator? which is essentially a part of a, a lock to a door of a car. Are you referring to this as, or characterizing it as a weapon or an item? Uh, can, I, can I answer that? It's, it's gonna be a door actuator. It, 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 I, would, I would characterize it as an item that if, if you see it, it would look like a, a, a weapon. Yeah, but I mean, right now, knowing what you know now, are you are you characterizing it as an item or a weapon? They're they're characterizing it as as an item. Okay, yeah, because at, at the scene, uh, minutes after the shooting happened, the supervisor on scene referred to it as an item. But yet later on that night, the public information officer went in front of the cameras and referred to it as a weapon. So I wanted clarification on that, and it's okay. nice that we got that. Now, with that having been said. An officer was seen at the scene moving this item uh, shortly after the shooting, after the subject had already been placed in custody, in handcuffs. Why would the officer at scene move that item around the crime scene, wandering around, before he flung it on the hood of a car? It seems like it's a real breach of protocol. Would you agree? 
uh, that investigation is is being handled by uh, Force Investigation Division. They're going to look at all the the protocols that that are involved in this particular incident, and they're going to dissect everything that occurred that day. So right now, um, it's so early. Yeah, but knowing that we know, we have video on scene showing an officer. No, after sir, the- I understand. I understand what you're saying, but in uh, I, we're at a disadvantage to to give um, an opinion about what occurred. Disadvantage to whom? Who, who is the disadvantage? We're, di- di- we're, I'm at a disadvantage because I, I don't know what what video you're referring to, um, where officers were removing moving it around. So we're going to let Force Investigation Division um, do their investigation. And then if they come up with some some issues with protocol, then we're going to we'll allow the department to. Well, the general feeling that I got from the scene were that they move this item, which. I, I got to tell you, Cap, and you say that it looks like a gun. I have a very good picture and video of it. it. Didn't look like a gun. It looked like a metal plate. With that having been said, people are worried that this item was moved from the scene to prevent people at the scene from filming, recording, and to move it before reporters got to the scene because they didn't want that on the ground right next to a pile of blood where people could have seen that it's not a gun. It's a latch, a latch actuator. With that having been said, are you describing the victim as a subject or a suspect at the time? Phil, he, Phil, he, if I can call you Phil, he was he was booked as a suspect at the time. Correct. Okay, I'm talking about right now though. Is he a suspect in this case? I understand he had warrants that are. Right separate from this case with right. this individual incident is he considered a subject or a suspect there is an open charge i don't know the exact section that he that he got booked on but he is considered so he is being charged with brandishing or something along that line yes sir and now he was described as an assault with a deadly weapon suspect do we have a victim in, of the assault of a deadly weapon that has press charges I, I don't have the full investigation in front of me to answer that question regarding the a specific victim. The criminal investigation is handled by force investigation. Uh, investigation. They got a in an internal. It's called a uh, the, the CAT team that handles the criminal part. The the criminal apprehension team. They're handling the criminal part, so they're the ones um, that have handled that. Yeah, but when you call him an assault with a deadly weapon suspect, how do you quantify that? Because the PIO at the scene said that this was an assault with a deadly weapon suspect who they believe was brandishing a handgun. Where does the assault with the deadly weapon come from? And this comes from the PIO. I understand at the time yeah. there, there was limited amount of information. Exactly. I'm talking about the PIO four hours later after they had time to gather information. Why did they refer to him as a assault with a deadly weapon suspect? Phil, you're asking me questions that are out of out of my preview. I can't speak to what the PIO said at the scene. Again, the criminal investigation is not ours. It's not doesn't belong to Southwest. It belongs to FID. So I'm I'm not the right person to ask that question. I'm sorry. I would I imagine there's some sort of symmetry between the PIO and the captain of Southwest Station, right? Yes. So I would imagine that if the PIO is putting out these statements, that you would be familiar with these statements. I was part of that process, but ultimately, what he says, I have no control over that. So I, I'm not sure what you're looking for, Bill. Okay. And uh, you, is he has not been booked on charges relating to this yet, though? Is that he what you're has, saying, or he is has, he under consideration? No, he has been booked. Okay. And so, when will there be some sort of release explaining exactly what he's being booked for? That will be part of that. Uh, that. Uh, that release that occurs in 45 days, that will be part of that, correct? Uh, wait, uh, if he's going to be booked with a charge, why would we have to wait 45 days to find out what charge he's being booked with? He's being booked. That information should be available now, right? I'm, 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 tell- here. I, I'm, I'm telling you that information will be released in that, in that uh, video that occurs sometime between now and 45 days that's up to do so he has not so as of right now he has not been booked is that what you're saying for this has, specific for, we're, he's been booked for warrants but not for charges relating to this case is that what phil, you're, you're not you, phil you're not letting me answer the question you, sure. if you ask me a question please allow me to finish i i as i indicated uh he has been booked on an open charge 
Yes, you are you are familiar and aware that he has some warrants also. That is part of that process. But yes, there is an open charge and he's been booked on it. Right. Sir, we're, we're going to move on. We, we, have, we have a few more questions. Sure, here. but what are the charges? We just want to know what he's charged with. You're saying he's been charged. What is it with? Nobody knows what he's been charged with. No Phil, one? Phil, again, I... That does not fall under Southwest's preview. It's under forced investigation. I don't want to speak out of, out of turn because it's Will not- Will you be releasing a 911 call? And, and multiple you? calls. It seems like there's multiple calls. Phil, I'm aware of one call. Um, if you're the PIO aware of, says there's multiple calls. Okay, Phil, you're so speaking over me, so I'm, I'm not going to answer any more questions because- uh, We're, we're going to move on. Um, this is not- yeah. No, you're just being- the, the PIO says something different than what you say, and you sure. can handle it. Sure. It's kind of ridiculous. We're, we're the PIO on. says there were. Sorry, we're, we're, we have more questions here. We're, we're going to move on. Uh, we we have an, another question from uh, Jan Williams. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, I would like to know first of all why is he here if he can't answer the questions, and if the field investigator is the person that has the questions, why aren't they here to answer the questions? Why would you have a press conference and not be prepared to answer questions from the public? Jan, I'm, I'm prepared to answer what I know there at the scene. The, the FID would not release any information that is part of an active investigation. So even if they were here, they would not get into the, the, those type of questions. But an active investigation only means you're trying to cover up the crimes that your officers committed. Uh, in the report that was released, all it was was that someone said that they saw someone that they think may have had a gun and your officer responding with what they think they saw and shooting and damn near near killing somebody off of what they thought, which was a lie. And now they're trying to make up and cover up. So an active investigation is only a cover up. So what currently what we know is that uh, Mr. Jermaine was only walking down the street and your officer decided to try to kill him. So okay, Jen. Why are uh, people here to answer that? To answer the questions. Okay, Not Jen. Only I, their family, I, I, our family, his family is here, and y'all are sitting here bullshitting them for your own PR. For your own PR, we tired of y'all out here killing us. Y'all okay, acting so, like Los Angeles is fucking hunting grounds for y'all. Okay, we Jen. Let me hear. Jan, I don't hear a we question, so I'll, that's more of a statement. You heard my question. Why aren't the people that are here to have that have the answers, your field and get investigators, why aren't they here to answer the questions? It's 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 force investigation division. Whatever the work I, is called. Ma'am, why okay, aren't they so here to answer the questions? Can can I answer your question? Can I answer your question? So we're giving you the protocol in terms of how the investigation will 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 take place. So it's going to take a long time for that investigation to 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 run its course. I believe he 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 answered that thoroughly. We cannot get into the details other than we're trying to see if what community community concerns that we have. But right now, we don't know all the intimate details of what occurred that night. That's why we have Force Investigation Division to actually map that out. Now, if there's some things that could have been done differently, that'll be um, outlined in that investigation that Force Investigation um, Division does. So um, with that being said, um, again, Our this was designed, again, are, this was designed, this was, killing us. ma'am, that this was, this was designed just to give you some information in terms of um, how the process goes when we have an officer involved shooting. Now, we're not going to go into all the details because that's not under our purview. But again, this is what this is only designed to give you an idea of what the process is. All right, we, we have uh, another question by. Um, Let's see, uh, uh, Ricky or Richie, who had had their hand up earlier. Go ahead with your question if you still have it. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to know what a non-firing weapon is and if the officer that just spoke can define an officer-involved shooting. Thanks. Okay, so an officer involved shooting is just what it is. It's an officer that discharges his weapon on an incident. Uh, it doesn't have to involve a hit of, of, of anything, but anytime an officer discharges his weapon is an officer involved shooting. As to your second question, can you repeat that? 
Uh, I believe you said he had a non-firing weapon earlier. What what does that mean? I, well, so as described it as an actuator, uh, it was a, a black device that I believe was described coming from a vehicle. Um, the officers perceived it, is what my understanding, as a gun. Could could it, it, it that item does not fire? It was not a gun. All right, we have a uh, another hand raised by uh, Kim Holmes. Go ahead with your question. Can you hear me? Yes. My question is, I guess, similar to what. Uh, Jan Williams was just saying, I'm not sure that I really understand what this process is. We as a community are extremely outraged at the continual killing of black and brown people. And, you know, there's really no point in having a, I don't even know what, what this is. There's no one here to answer any questions. So why would you set this up? without a way to give the family some understanding as to why yet another black and brown community member has been shot. We see this over and over and over again. This has happened so many times where we've, where we've had black and brown community members killed. So far this month, there have been, what, eight, nine? I mean, this is a continual problem that you guys don't seem to understand or appreciate the fact that this is a major problem this country has, specifically this county, because we are constantly under attack. And if you are having a press conference of any kind, there has to be someone there to reassure the community that this is a problem that you understand, you're going to address it, and you're going to fix it. And especially if you are not here to answer questions to reassure the family, then there's no reason to have this. So, so I, I don't believe listening that Jan got an answer to her question. So I'm going to ask it again. Why are you having a quote-unquote conference about the shooting of yet another black and brown resident without someone there that can explain the details to the family without, you know, I don't understand. It makes no sense to me because there's no point. That's what we all want. That's why we're all frustrated. That's why people protest. That's why we have rallies because this is a problem that affects our communities. They're constantly we are constantly losing family members to police sanctioned, state sanctioned violence. And everyone acts as if, oh, it's no big deal, or oh, we're overreacting, or oh no, the police are in danger. And but yet when there is, I saw her in the news the other day, there was a white shooter, and yet again, that person had a gun. And yet again, he was able to be disarmed without even being shot at. But yet it doesn't happen for black and brown people. The instinct is to shoot them. And we are tired of this. And we are, we've had enough of being the target for police. And it's like, oh, the police, everybody thinks they're bad. We think that the police are evil because there's never a solution. It's constant killing and it's increasing at astronomical rates and it doesn't get addressed. So if you're gonna have a conference about someone that's been shot, we need answers. We as a community need answers and we're not gonna stop calling and we're not gonna stop asking questions and we're not gonna stop looking for answers until you guys stop this because it's happening all over the country, not just here. So we're here to address. We just had, I forget how many there's been so far this month, like eight or nine, maybe we're even up to 10 of people minding their own damn business. And now all of a sudden they're shot. And this person had nothing. 
and he's dead or he's not dead, but he's was shot. Why is that happening? Can you answer that question for me? Since you can't seem to answer any other question. Why is it that black and brown people, police officers or deputies are able to disarm, even if they're carrying a gun, they're able to be disarmed peacefully if they're white, if they're black or brown, they're on the news and we have a yet another hashtag of a community member who has either been shot at or been ki- shot at and killed like the man in, I can't now remember the city, who was shot 90 rounds, 90 rounds into this person. And 43 of them, of those rounds, or 40 something of those rounds, hit his body. Well, guess what? He's dead. And then they put on handcuffs on the dead body. That makes no sense to me. Why would there ever be a reason? That's like, what is it target practice on human beings now? Why is this continuing to happen? I know the answer. The answer is white supremacy. But I want to know from your point of view, why does this problem not stop? And why is it getting worse? Since you're not able to answer any questions about this incident, Give me an answer as to why this problem continues. Because you have, we have zero trust in the police right now. Zero. Because, you know, people are minding their damn business. You know, a little girl was shopping and trying on her quinceanera dress and got shot because the police thought it was a good idea to spray bullets into a friggin' mall. She was in a dress. Okay, room. hello, hello, ma'am. Yes, um, I'm waiting for an answer you. to my question. So we are going to conclude this this um, town hall. Oh, so um, you're not going to answer we, my question. We've given you guys the process of what, uh, anytime we're involved in an officer-involved shooting, you understand that this investigation is going to take uh, some time and um, we'll ensure that, again, it's going to be a thorough investigation by Force Investigation Division. Uh, we're not at liberty to get into... Um, all the questions in terms of the intimate details of the investigation, because it's not at Southwest Division, it's at Force Investigation Division. So if there aren't any other questions that's um, that that's pertinent to the investigation, again, we can't talk about the intimate details of the investigation. But with that being said, I think we're going to conclude this um, mm-hmm. this town hall. You have another hand up before you conclude. Recording stopped. Are you going to call him that last hand?